Hi, Terry Shanefeld from UAB School of Medicine. Composite endpoints are frequently used in clinical trials, but they can be misleading. In this video, I'll discuss what a composite endpoint is and give you a way to determine if the composite is a good one or if you need to look at the individual components of the outcome instead. So I'm going to focus on this case during this video of an 80-year-old gentleman who, despite optimal medical therapy, has refractory angina that affects his activities and reduces his quality of life. You suggest he see a cardiologist for cardiac catheterization and possible revascularization, but he's reluctant to do this. But he'd consider it if undergoing revascularization would benefit him. So there is a study that can help decide us and the patient in making this decision. And it's called the Time Trial. It was published in JAMA about a decade ago. And it was a well-designed randomized control trial that looked at elderly patients with refractory angina. And it compared optimal medical therapy to, to revascularization. And the composite endpoint that they used was a combination of death, non-fatal MI, or admission for acute coronary syndrome. What do you think about this composite? Is this a good composite? What patients think this is a good composite? For now, I'll leave it up to you to what you think good means, but that'll be what we shape the rest of this lecture to try to decide what good means. So just what is a composite endpoint? Well, it's a combination of multiple outcomes. And if the patient has any one of the multiple outcomes, they're considered to have the outcome for the entire study. Now, why do this? Well, as medical therapy has improved, the risk of having any outcome has reduced over time. And what this means is investigators have to follow more people for longer periods of time to get enough events in the study. And think about it. The time trial had three individual components of the composite. It's much more likely that a patient will have one of three things than just one of those things. So what a composite does is allow investigators to have less people and shorter durations of follow-up. It makes the trial more efficient and more cost-effective. Now, the important assumption that you have to remember is that the underlying validity of a composite endpoint is that the treatment or the intervention will have this, a similar effect on each component of the outcome. Very important concept. Keep that in mind. So composites are not created equally. They can be misleading. And so when you see a composite used in the study, you should screen it against these three questions. Are the components of the endpoint of similar importance to patients? Do they occur with about similar frequency? And does the intervention affect them so similarly with a similar relative risk reduction? If the answer is no to any of these components, ignore the composite and just look at each of the individual components. And we'll see an example of this a little bit later. So let's go through each of these questions individually. Are each of the components of the composite of similar importance to the patient? They should be of similar importance to the patient. And patients assign varying importance to different health outcomes. So let's look at this randomized control trial of steroids for patients with acute exacerbation of COPD. The composite used in this study was death, need for intubation, or administration of open steroids. This is clearly a, a bad composite. Patients would much more prefer to have to be prescribed open-label steroids than dying. They'll take intubation over dying. So this is clearly not a composite that a patient would say, oh yeah, all these things are very equal. Well, what about this study, a randomized control trial of four doses of perioperative aspirin in patients undergoing carotid and darterectomy? Their composite was death or stroke? Actually, studies have shown patients value these two things about the same. A disabling stroke is just about as bad as death for most patients, so this is not an unreasonable composite outcome. Well, here's the table one or the results table from the time trial. Look at this composite. See what you think. Would patients value all these things similarly? Pause the video, and when you're done thinking about it, restart and see how I answer it. So what do you think? I think this is a poor outcome. Clearly, being admitted to the hospital for an acute coronary syndrome would be much more desirous than dying. So I don't think patients would view these three components of this composite very well. Therefore, I answer no, so I should ignore the effect of the intervention on the composite and look at its effect on each of these individual things. If it's a good composite, each of the components of that composite should occur with similar frequency. It lets you know that the intervention is affecting it similarly and that there's a similar biology of each of the components of the composite. So look in this area here for the time trial. This gives you the raw numbers for each of the components of the composite. What do you think? Pause the video, think about it, and restart it when you're done.
So what do you think? So certainly in the medical arm, there's a large gradient of outcome events across this composite. Fairly few deaths, lots of admissions for acute coronary syndrome. In the invasive arm, it's not as bad. Yeah, there's a gradient of two here, double the number of admissions for acute coronary syndrome, but not quite as bad. But still, I'd like to see these a little bit tighter. This would sort of get a so-so for me, but really we should probably reject it and again look at each of the effects on each of the individual components and not the effect on the overall composite. The other thing this shows, it gets back to what I talked about earlier of why composites are useful. You can see it's fairly rare to have a death, fairly rare to have a non fatal MI, but pretty common for hospital admission. So you can see having any one of these things would have to follow more people than somebody having any one of the three alone. Again, the validity of a composite endpoint rests on the fact that the intervention has a similar effect on each of the components, and if it does, should have a similar relative risk reduction across each of the components. So this is an example of a study that compared erbosartan and ARB to amlodipine, a calcium channel blocker in patients with diabetic nephropathy. The composite was all-cause mortality, end-stage renal disease, or doubling of serum creatinine. And if it had the similar effect, all these dots or boxes should be fairly lined up. You can see all-cause mortality really sticks out over to the end. So this is a bad composite. The biology of these things is very different. The biology of end-stage renal disease and doubling of serum creatinine, fairly similar biology, but mortality has lots of different things that impact mortality. So this is a bad composite. Also, patients would value this composite very differently. Nobody would mind their creatinine doubling compared to dying. So not a good composite. Well, what about the time trial? Here's the composite endpoint. Here's the effect. Overall, a 69% reduction in the risk of the composite endpoint in the invasive group compared to the medical group. But when you look at each of these components, the hazard ratio should be similar, and they're not. They're very different. There's a non-significant 51% increase in the risk of death, a 25% reduction in the risk of non-fatal MI, though not statistically significant, and a significant reduction in the acute admission for an acute coronary syndrome, and 81% reduction in that. So this is clearly not a good composite. Um, the effect on each of these things is very different. These things should have all been similar, not the same, but similar had this been a good composite. So I'm going to reject this um, composite endpoint. I'm not going to say the effect of invasive therapy reduces the risk of this composite um, by 69%. Uh, it is true that it does, but really the only thing that drives this reduction is the reduction in the admission for acute coronary syndrome. It's the only thing that was statistically significant. So what is my summary of the time study? So are all components of similar importance to patients? Clearly not. Um, they didn't occur with similar frequency, and each of the components did not have a similar reduction. There was a 51% increase in risk of death, 25% reduction in MI, and 81% reduction in hospitalization. So this is not a good composite. I should look at each of the individual components to make a clinical decision. I hope this video has helped you understand how to determine if a composite endpoint is a good one. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course website or through the contact me section of my blog. Have a great day.